Alright, time for the next installment of the Beginner's Guide series. Today, I will be playing some Sejuani here into an AD Shaco, actually. That's kind of surprising. With their team comp, I was expecting an AP one, but I guess this is much better for me, so I'll take it. Uh, full AD comp on the enemy team, essentially, because I'm not going to be worried too much about a Mumu damage. I mean, he's got to do some percent as max HP, but building an entire item probably to defend against their supports going to be unnecessary, I think. I prefer it if Draven would help me with a nice leash instead of being under turret. That would be nice. The call does uh, not forgive. It doesn't look like it. Hello? Can we get some assistance here, perhaps? I want to do some pings on him, so potentially he's like alt-tapped. Alt he might be uh, hearing his sound still, if that makes sense. I could use that to my uh, advantage to maybe get him to notice me or something. Well, for the Beginner's Guide series, there is a playlist in the description that you can check out. This will have all of the champions in it, so if you're looking for a specific one, be sure to check that out so you can uh, find it. Start with E here, because it's the fastest thing to clear your initial camp with. It seems that the Shaco started on top side. So we're going to keep that in mind. He, I have a ward, so if he does invade my top side quite early, we're going to be we're gonna be able to adapt to, it, to that. So that's good. Good. We're just gonna go for a nice full clear. It's by far the most consistent thing you can do uh, for like like most mid low to mid elos. Just going for a full clear because if you try to prioritize like ganks and stuff, while they can work, the consistency of your laners to be able to hold up a lead with the time you have invested is less than ideal for the most part. So definitely something to keep in mind. As long as you keep yourself more consistent with XP, that will be generally your best bet. Uh, abilities wise it's a pretty straightforward kit honestly your e will like the sooner you get those procs up as you see them here you'll be able to e a target and that will freeze them for a bit uh, your w will uh, kind of lock back minions and stuff and will slow your q is a knock up it has quite a long cooldown so you do have to keep that in mind uh, don't try to like waste it try to like actually land it there's 18 second cooldown on this quite big using it willy-nilly for like wall dashes as well is something you have to be a bit mindful about because of the fact that it's such a long cooldown based on what yasuo just did there i think he just warded top river so if i'm gonna like look for a gank i could potentially queue this wall and walk around if i want to be fast about it or walk all the way around shaco is definitely gonna clear towards both side here i would imagine unless he did a leashless start i suppose that is possible as well Gonna max W first. Oh, by the way, your ult also is just a, a big root stun, essentially. It's a good engage tool. You can just hit him from long range with the ult and you should be pretty good. You know? Okay, so we know this ward's most likely placed in this bush based on his pathing, so we're just gonna loop around this way. I would go for a mid gank, but the One is not nowhere to be found, so we're just gonna walk at this guy real quick. Ping a couple times so my GP is aware of the situation. Because the map awareness might be lacking a little bit. There we go, snare him right away. As long as my GP actually auto attacks him, that would be preferable. He's gonna dash through a bunch of minions and just die here. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Cool. Very good. This is just a workaround for the uh for the uh like war the war that he placed. No interest in taking any of his farm here, really. I just want to push this out as quick as possible so he gets the recall. And this gets into it fast enough so the wave doesn't um, doesn't hold in front of the enemy's turret, if that makes sense. If you get the like, if the laner gets the kill, then taking like maybe three minions of of a wave like that, like taking like a little bit of farm off of the wave, if you need like uh, your Bami Cinder on the back or something like that, is definitely worth it. Uh, but if you get the kill, then at that point, try to just give all the CS because you don't. You kind of want to spread the gold a, a little bit more evenly at that point, if that makes sense. I don't know. It, it's just a situation if you don't try to hog everything, essentially. Because if I, like, uh, kept the kill and then also take, like, half his wave, that would be a lot worse for GP. So we're just going to try to get it low and then use it like that. But if I'm like, like, if I don't really need the item either, I don't really need the minions. But let's say I was like 900 gold or something, I could just take the cannon instead. which Or like a couple more minions or whatever, and then get enough gold for my Bami Cinder on the first back. 
which would then be worth it if he gets the kill. But if I get the kill, I'm definitely going to have enough money for it anyway, so that wouldn't matter. But you get what I mean, probably. Sure you uh, know what I'm getting at. Uh, nice. Topman is winning now as well. Very good. Ganks paying off. That is probably a death on mid lane. I probably should rotate on over, eh? If he kind of walks up, perhaps. There's a chance. There's the Jaco. You see him. I just make sure to flash there just to be safe. It's a good barrier bait, for sure, but just flash to be safe to actually, like, make sure I get the range there. Got another mid wave. Oh, you just hit six. Okay, I just hit six as well. We're chilling. Okay, good. Clear this out. We see Bolt Scuttle spawning, so we're going to take that. I, in this case, I skip out on Gromp, obviously, honestly, because of the uh, mid lane situation, right? Make sure I clear this. I should be able to get a pretty good gank angle here. There's a control ward here as well, so this makes this super free. Leave no survivors. That's going to be a 2v1 for the enemy. Wait, they lose that? Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I should have helped. I guess I'll push the wave. I couldn't really kill the Amumu, but I was like, I hit the assist already on the Trist. So I wasn't too worried about, like, going for that. Uh, if I can hold the Amumu at bay, perhaps, like, I can just make something happen like that. I have to push this wave into the turret, because I don't want this to freeze outside the turret for Draven. That'd be quite bad. i use that to clear. Good, Good enough for me. I'm not too happy about that. I actually thought, like, I, I'm... It, if you're playing against a Draven, it is preferable to save him, if that makes sense. Because uh, you don't, he, I don't want him to lose his uh, passive stacks. I want him to get the kill if I can give it to him. I guess he didn't lose too many stacks there, but I don't know. I uh, perhaps should have helped that instead of going for the Amumu. The Amumu went for me, so it's like I could just hold a fight against the Amumu and they will do if you want him and I'll be fine. Alright, top playing gank is heavily paying off. Very good. That's what we like to see. Also, the benefit this game specifically is the enemy team is just full AD, right? So as a tank, like, that's that's a dream situation. Or you only have to build, like, one type of resistance. My ult's gonna be back up very soon here as well. Ultimate Hunter is definitely pr providing some benefit there. I could just go for the bot lane gank once again here, which is probably something I'm gonna look for. Put the potion here, might as well use it. They don't know I'm here, surely. They are playing quite safe, though. They're playing very safe. I'm a bit surprised. That's perfect. This is what I'm looking for. That's the engage I'm looking for. And for them to commit. A Draven to kill. Perfect. Ah, what is this man like they, they positioned themselves way too safe the uh, the nami especially like she had way more room to walk up to a play there but i guess it's fine i just needed the nami to walk up initially to bait like the uh the amumu q and the Trish jump into the play you know that type of deal am i like at least my nami or something help like hello dude why are you on the turret? Like, be there. To, like, now it doesn't matter because we just saw the Shaco topside. But for me, in a situation earlier, it does matter because if the Shaco shows up and I'm, like, hitting Dragon and stuff and he's just going to be able to, like, finish me off, that would be quite bad. You know? And it doesn't, like... If a Draven is, like, finishing off a wave and pushing out the turret, that's, like, fine, right? Like, we expect something like that. But for the Nami, there's no reason to do that as well. Like, she could just rotate on over. What I think is actually happening here is he's doing Rift Herald. I'm gonna have to go over this way. Ik was on Herald, most likely. I do have quite a bit of gold, so I do have to be. Oh, he's not on Herald. Interesting. Okay, this is the real one then. Lux? Can we. Can I. Oh, no, Lux got a no kill on mid lane. He doesn't have his thingy anymore here, yeah, I was about to say. I used my uh, my stack passive there to identify the real one, which made it quite easy. 
I was wondering why Lux wasn't showing up, but Lux had a fight with Yone, so I guess it's fine. I win the 1v1, like, for the most part, as long as I make sure to uh, get the real one as a focus target, which I did. Good. Finish off these top camps and I may look for the Herald. I'm kind of waiting for my smite at least to be up for the Herald to be a possible play. And while at the meantime also making sure I kill my camp so I don't waste my camp uptime too much if I'm gonna go for the Herald, if that makes sense. We just saw that plant fly bot lane, so we're just gonna ping back to uh, notify my team that Shake was most likely there. I mean, there's a chance that that was just a, their support hitting it as well, to be fair, but it's better safe than sorry type of situation. He doesn't get to dash past me. Use the E. Perfect. There we go. This is a good opportunity for me to just go for Herald. The Giovanni E will do a lot of damage to this. I do have quite a lot of gold here, but with both Yone dead and the Yasuo under turret, Jaco bot lane most likely, this is just a free Herald. That I should look for. Quite a big double kill for the enemy team, I suppose. I mean, the good thing here is that it doesn't matter as much, because, I mean, they're full AD. Like, what are they going to do against me late game, right? Push this off. I'm just going to use this straight on mid lane, I think. Just use it right away. Lux will show up soon enough. This is not going to be killed by him in time. Gonna get some clean cash out of it. Just make sure you don't miss. Thank you very much. Perfect. I just make sure I set up there. Like, I can use my ult, and then right before the ult would end, I would use Q to be able to see C lock him longer. What the? Shit, I didn't think about that. The reason I got turret echo there as well is because of my Bami Cinder. But I completely didn't think about Shaco being able to uh, pull that on me. Uh, with the, um, well, essentially Bami Cinder bait, right? Because if I stand under turret range and he Bami Cinders me, I get turret echo and I insta die. I should have respected Shaco's invisibility potential more there, that's my bad. Let's take one of these. The mythic we're going for is the even Stroud, by the way. It's just simply the better mythic at the moment. Like, after the Radiant changes... Radiant's good, don't get me wrong, but the value of this item is insane. Like, it ups the damage done by 10% and for, like, immobilizing champions, which on Sejuani is, have, like, very easy. Really easy. You have an entire kit to do it with, essentially, so it just ups the damage output. And I don't really... I need ex ex like anything else, just upping the team's damage output is colossal. But even Stroud's uh, not the best item if you already have an even Stroud on your support. So let's say your support goes for even Stroud as an item, you want to take Radiant Virtue instead. Quite simple. I mean, you could also just go for Radiant Virtue, I suppose, if you prefer it. But the even Stroud, in my opinion, is just straight up better. So. That is down to your choice, I suppose. Let's see if I can go for a bot gank. This is warded, so we're just going to have to walk at them real quick. Should be able to get a nice ult off here. Okay, well, we go for the Amumu then. Well, he sidestepped down, so... Oh. Damn, I actually didn't think that was gonna kill, but the Draven auto attack land... Ah, uh, well, whatever. I want, the kill to get, I want to give the kill to Draven, ideally, because Draven just gets extra money for it, right? But... I'll just do the skull in the meantime where my bolt lane's kind of chilling. Good kill from Lux. Okay. That's fine. Let's hopefully get some assistance on Dragon. That would be nice. Yone is dead, so there's really not much to be done there. Lux is doing quite well. Bolt lane is doing quite well as well after that like early gank situation he's winning. Doing my best here to salvage like bot lane for the most part as well. Like they have been struggling a bit, but with certain ganks it has been helping. One of the things I want to prioritize now is like looking for level 11 because that's a big spike to look for. 
Might have to go bolt lane here to be able to do something about this Shaco. This is fine. Shaco is in a bad spot here. Pretty sure that's the real one. Okay, they kind of died. I'm gonna smite that because it's 90 gold for a smite, which I'll take. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to hit it. I think it's worth it. Ooh, that's a problem. I got knocked into the Shaco box there for extra CC duration. Also got ignited. A uh, little optimistic there, I suppose. I, my Q also got blocked by Shaco dashing forward. Which was kind of unfortunate, because I think if I just hit the Trist from the start with that, I would have been much better off. But, like, looking at their team comp here, it's a pretty obvious, uh, pretty obvious random wins. Because crit, crit, crit. And Shaco is going for AD Shaco as well, which is going to be crit Shaco. So random wins is going to be my next buy. I mean, my death there isn't particularly good, but it's also not really bad. Because I don't think I had a shutdown, did I? Oh, no, I did have a shutdown. Okay, then it's a little bit worse. But still fine, really. Oh, GP died. Alright, well, a little too optimistic there on Boltman, I suppose. It is what it is. It doesn't really matter that much, because I'm going to be playing Sejuani into a full AD comp. Like, that's like the most disgusting thing in the world. They're essentially never going to be able to kill me later on anyway. After random ones, like, you know... I should be fine. As long as I keep my objective control up and I don't die losing an objective. That's like one of the big things to uh, look out for here. Definitely want to look for this Herald in 30 seconds. Is he Shaco bolt as well? So I can look for potentially his topside camps. Might have to shadow my mid laner. Here for a bit. I think she's stepping too far back, giving too much respect. I want this mid turret really badly. Cool. Just ult him right away. It's CC lock there. Very good kill. Nice. Good stuff. Oh. Sure to flash over the Amumu so my my Q doesn't get hit by that. Perfect. Flash over the Amumu so I get to focus the other guy down. Finish off the mid turret and then we can walk away. If I Q there, the Amumu was standing in such a spot that it would prevent me from actually hitting my Q and it would get blocked by Amumu, so I have to flash over it first and then hit the Tristana with it. It was an optimistic move to walk into me like that. It's gonna be a more optimistic move throughout this entire game because I'm just gonna get progressively more tanky. So it's gonna be like more dodgy every single time for them to uh, deal with me. But they're gonna have to rush some serious armor penetration if they wanna deal with me. And I mean serious armor penetration because I could just stack armor. I have literally no use for magic resist, which is very scary for the enemy team. I'm gonna lose the Herald now, though, actually, now I think about it. Yeah, oh well, that's fine. I need to play for the next Dragon here. Ooh, my top laner started losing pretty badly. Do I have enough money for this? I don't think I do, right? I do not. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'll just buy a Control Ward. We're gonna have to get this Dragon in 20 seconds. We're probably gonna need Lux for this, I think, but you what you take. let's sweep here. The fact that Lux is top lane here is not ideal because she is a very strong team member right now. Jaco is top, we just insta dragon. I'll place the control ward as well. As long as Lux doesn't die, we're good. 
I need to make sure I protect this Lux as well in team fights because she is mag building Magi's and she's worth a thousand gold right now. Uh, both Lux and the other guy are tilt plane. That's kind of bad. Yeah, man. I was not good. Like, Lux stayed tilt plane the entire time, essentially forfeiting Dragon. I thought we had enough time, but the Shaco realized real quickly what he was doing, and he instantly rotated down, which was a good play from him. We cannot afford this Lux to go tilt plane like that. I really need this guy to be there because he is one of my biggest damage sources and I can tank for a long time, but Draven and Nami are essentially useless um, compared to Lux. And with the Lux there, we most likely would have just insta won, won his fight entirely and now they get a dragon for no reason. Like Lux essentially killed Yasuo, but we lost an entire objective for it, which is just simply not worth it. I will so, I suppose I shouldn't have started the dragon, but if the Shaco was going to remain top, then the dragon was super free. But he made the correct choice there to uh, rotate on over. I just need the Lux not to do this again, essentially. I really need her to be in a fight and not just randomly walk to play when Dragon is a main priority. This is like the kind of downside about playing a tank because my damage output is very reliant on my teammates. So in a situation like a fight there, like if I was playing, I don't know, like a damage champion like Viego maybe, it doesn't even matter who it is, Hecarim. And I have like a pretty substantial lead and I could just win the fight by myself. But as a tank, I really need some type of damage from your teammates. Which can get a little annoying, especially lower elos. Because, uh, as you saw, her macro which is not good enough. And she ran top lane when Dragon was literally just respawning. And that just loses you a uh, objective pretty quickly, unfortunately. I am pretty sure I killed his Yasuo in a 1v1. I mean, he does have Blade of the Rune King, but like... I'm gonna take my time here. There we go. Okay. Mm, you actually kill me rather fast, I would say. Ah, I really hate you, man. Uh, okay. Probably shouldn't have smited him, but I also didn't want him to get like a return ultimate or whatever the hell off. So I just be safe and sorry. It's okay. We'll get the random ones here. We'll just build a thorn mill. We're just gonna go. We can just go straight into armor. Get the healing reduction from this. Get the reflect damage going. Are we Baron? And as long as I just try to like play team fights with my Lux and protect her as much as I can, we should be good. This Blade of the Rune King actually ended up doing a res respectable amount of damage to me there. Dude, what is what is that? Dude, how like this this type of aggression is not playable. If my entire, like, basically you saw the entire ally team recall from Gangplank's perspective. The second your entire team backs, you cannot walk up. You literally cannot walk up because you will die instantly. Make sure I protect her. Make sure I see him. Perfect. You see him as well. This is just an instant Baron. I flashed backwards there to make sure that I can protect my Lux. You have to like identify your like, biggest damage dealer and make sure you protect it. The biggest threat in that fight was not me dying because that doesn't matter. The biggest threat there is the Tristana killing Lux. So I just flash and go for the ult and stuff, you know, make sure I get him. Make sure I get this down. There we go. The 
Dragon as a team. I, he really needs to recall. Don't waste... He either walks the dragon right now or he recalls. He cannot waste time. The sad part here is GP just hardens it, so it's going to be a 4v5 anyway, but... That is besides the point, I suppose. Prioritize this Tristana here. The kill, that's good enough. does this hit this guy make sure to ult Pro be as like protective of your team as possible the more you can disrupt the better don't have smite now though but yeah gp kind of into you saw the entire fight here though draven wasn't there because he decided not to recall straight away make sure to cc him right away perfect so because the draven didn't instantly recall he actually uh, was not able to participate in the dragon fight in time, really. And that was actually a lot worse. Something you really should be paying attention to when you're trying to look for recalls, especially like after a Baron or something. Always synergize recalls with your team. If the objective is spawning, you have to be there, especially these types of teamfight situations. This counts for you as a jungler as well, by the way. Like, don't try to squeeze out like an extra three camps or something when recalling is essentially required. Like, you have no choice. So you cannot be too late. This is fine with me, actually. Okay. I mean, I am never gonna die, but... That's fine. I'm pretty sure they don't kill me, because I'm just way too tanky. Yeah. Lux only had to deal with an Amumu, which I think was just fine. I had the rest of their team on me. And she is winning those indeed. Wait for the wave here a bit, because I don't want to tank turret. Now, you can definitely look... Like, if you're looking for, like, a magic resist item or something, you can definitely look for... Um, a for Force of Nature is very good. Uh, but I don't need magic resist this game, so I should be fine. I actually don't... I'm gonna back. I think I just act do I recall this is an end angle. Like I their their timers are very low, but I think this is actually fine. Yeah, never mind. I'm trolling. Probably should have been hitting towards more faster. If we lose now, this is kind of my bad. Or I lose the fight now, I guess this is kind of my bad. I'm gonna smite the box away so we don't get feared and I can just tank damage. I don't have any mana, but as long as they focus me, I don't really care, you know, that's the type of situation we're in. So here we finish off four mil and then I just get an extra armor item probably. Uh, actually I would probably build the demonic. Because I'm already so unbelievably tanky that just doing extra damage with Demonic would be the move here, I think. But uh, yeah, that is it for Sejuani, and I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing 25.5k damage, which is very respectable. Obviously didn't outdamage the Lux, but I'm not expecting to do that as a tank. Uh, still outdamage the rest of my team by a good margin though, so that's quite nice. But uh, yeah, true damage at 2k, which is pretty much just blue smite. Or smite in general. I damage to objectives at 38.7. I was trying to keep on top of this as much as possible. This is like one of the big things. If you're playing like a tankier jungler, uh, always keeping up your objective control is huge. Like that's one of the biggest things you should always try to look for. Like where you're playing Sejuani, Nunu, Zek. Doesn't really matter because if you have like the objectives, you're generally going to win more, obviously. So uh, yeah, generally look for that big things. Healing done at 16k. We have damage taken at 33.1k as well. Our biggest goal here is to make sure Lux takes the least damage possible because we're protecting her for the most part, right? We're making sure we tank as much damage, be as disruptive as possible in team fights, as you saw, like using my CC on specific targets and stuff like that. Uh, we have self-mitigated damage here as well at 73.2k. Well, this Sijuani will stack this up massively, but this basically means 73.2 with the 33 here, which I took like 106k damage, 107k damage, uh, which is obviously colossal. That's very good team fight setup. Be, be as disruptive as possible. Make it as easy on your teammates as you can. Aftershock for 1400 damage and 1300 mitigate, which is just quite nice. Want to fly for some healing on my allies. We have conditioning for the extra resistances, which is really nice. On flinching here, 
is just the best rune straight up like you can take revitalize but it's not that great and the other one is also like eh, compared to unflinching i guess if they have absolutely zero cc then sure but they have some of it this is already the better one we take sh cheap shot here for the uh, damage because it has about 1100 additional damage which is quite nice you have a lot of slowing ccing capabilities so this is gonna proc rather frequently and then we have the ultimate hunter to give us as many ults as possible which is going to give us uh, many more gank opportunities which are going to result in kills because the more ults you have the more free kills you're going to pick up because it's essentially a free kill every time and uh, makes things easier especially if you're going to go for things like um for the mythic uh, for the radiant virtue as well like having ult more frequently is more beneficial you're still going to have to wait for like the cooldown for the uh, radiant virtue itself but just having more opportunities to be able to use it is quite good but yeah that's really it for sejuani i uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did make sure to like button below and subscribe for more i upload daily so i'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs> goodbye